welcome into your practice. And this practice is gonna be a combination practice. So it's gonna be about half vinyasa flow and half nice, beautiful, soft yin poses, which I call vinyanasa. So it's like a marriage of those two styles. And a bolster is gonna be your best friend today. I'm calling this practice a supportive routine. So the structure of this practice is very classic. All of the poses that we're doing today are very classic shapes and asanas that you've likely done you know, a dozen hundreds of times before perhaps. Um, and yet we're gonna be doing almost all of them with the support of this bolster. So anytime we use props, I say this very often, think of this as another limb of your body. So as we're moving this around the mat, try not to get frustrated or to see it as an obstacle, but think of it in the same way as you move your arms, your feet, um, your hands around your mat for practice. We're going to start in child's pose at the back of the mat with the bolster out in front, horizontally across the mat. And you wanna put it a distance from you so that your hands and the upper part of your forearms are resting on your bolster, but your heart and maybe even your head and your forehead can kind of melt down towards the mat. And so we're starting in this position that's kind of opening up the front of the heart space, but also opening up underneath the arms, through the underarms, the sides of the torso, and hopefully feels like an invitation for a full breath. And just acknowledging that this first minute or so of practice is often a time of transition where even though your body has arrived, your mind may be taking a little bit more time to fully show up in the practice. And so if you're finding your mind is being a little bit less than cooperative, maybe just extended a kind invitation to join the party. And then we're going to be shifting into a variation that's going to move our awareness to the back of the heart space. So on your next inhale, lift the head and the heart just enough to take the right arm, thread it underneath the left, and then your right shoulder and your right temple will melt down towards the mat. And as you take a couple of breaths there, Breathing into that back doorway to the heart space. In your body, that may feel like your right shoulder blade is sliding off the back, kind of towards the floor. And we want to let that happen. As you take some full breaths, welcoming in any sort of kind of opening in the upper back. And then using your next breath as a point of transition, as you inhale, lifting the head, unraveling that right arm, replacing it onto the bolster and switching sides. Left arm threads underneath, left shoulder and left temple melt down. And seeing if you can approach this warm up for the practice today which is quite slow and very gentle with a lot of patience. In the spirit of today's practice, everything is done with a sort of gentle, supportive spirit. Take one more breath here. And then again, using the breath as a point of transition, lifting the head and unraveling the left arm, we're gonna go ahead and lift the torso. We're gonna turn the bolster, bolster so it's now running with the torso, with the body, and come to lie belly down. So the back of my pelvis is on the back rim of the bolster, my belly is right in the middle, and then my chest is right at the front. 
And then I'm gonna elongate my arms so my palms are down alongside me and just let my head hang. And we're gonna move into some Shalabhasana or locust variations. So as you inhale, you'll start to lift your head, your neck, your chest, and your shoulders. Feeling how the bolster is kind of supporting you as you rise into this back bend. Now we're keeping the feet down for this variation so you feel the toenail side of the feet anchoring down into the mat and you might kind of encourage the tailbone to lengthen towards the heels ever so slightly. Take one more inhale here, maybe pushing the palms down into your mat. And then exhale, let everything soften so that you're kind of totally relaxing over the pillow. You might even roll your palms up to face the ceiling and let your head hang. And then we're gonna take this two more times. So as we inhale, turn the head to the face, the floor. So turning it parallel once more. And then start to lift the head, the neck, the chest, the shoulders. You can straighten the knees, flip the palms once more. And then this time we're going to lift the right palm off the mat and the left leg off the mat. So opposite arm and leg. Beautiful, reaching those right fingertips towards the back of the mat, enjoying this support underneath the belly. And then exhale, slowly releasing and softening out of this, taking a breath or two in between sides. Letting the knees soften, letting the shoulders round forward. And then we approach the next repetition by flipping the palms back onto the mat, straightening the knees, and we start to lengthen out through the neck, lifting head, neck, chest, shoulders. Legs are active, and then lifting the left palm away from the mat, followed by the right leg. Letting the face be soft knowing that this is a pose we do so often, flat down on the mat. And so seeing if you can enjoy the feedback and the support that this bolster is giving you. And then softening down, releasing, resting for a couple of breaths before we do our final repetition. And then for this last repetition, go ahead and lift the head back up to neutral, flip the palms back onto the mat, and slightly different this time, bend your knees and flex your feet so that the soles of your feet are pointing up towards the ceiling. As we've done every other repetition, start to lengthen out through the head, the neck, the chest, the shoulders, and then lift both palms off the mat and push the feet up towards the ceiling. See if you can lift your knees and your thighs. So only the belly and the front of the torso is on that pillow or bolster. Take one more big inhale here, beautiful. And then slowly release the knees down, the palms down, release the shins. Bring your palms underneath your shoulders. Push into the palms to lift up to all fours. The spine is very likely to feel kind of tender here and start to move through some cat and cows. So the bolster's right there in between your palms. We're not using it for these cat and cows. This is just a totally traditional cat-cow flow here, which we'll move through for about 30 more seconds or so. So four to five more rounds, depending on the pace of your breath. The truth about our yoga practice is it is innately changeable. It evolves with time. It is malleable to our needs and it's incredibly adaptive. And so there may be times where you need extra support in your practice and that is not a negative. It's just a reflection of where we are sometimes. We're gonna to start to move into downward facing dog. So I'm gonna walk so that my palms are more towards the front of my bolster, tuck my toes, lift my hips, and then depending on the depth of your dog and the height of your bolster, some of you may find that the forehead lands very gently on the surface of the bolster. And if it lands there, wonderful, just know that, you know, all of the dimensions worked out in your favor. 
But if you find that the forehead and the bolster don't quite meet, then that's completely fine. There's no need to force it. Sometimes it's just a matter of if the dimensions are right or not. Let's take about two more breaths and downward facing dog. And after this next breath, we'll be shifting into a slightly more vigorous portion of the practice, our sun salutation portion, and where we will be actively using the bolster. Take one more inhale here, and then we'll start our sun salutation from this position. So lower the knees back to the mat. You're going to step your right foot forward on the outside of your bolster. And then again, not getting frustrated with moving the bolster, we're going to shift it slightly to the left, lift our left knee, and slide it so that it's underneath the left knee and shin. And then when you get the bolster in place underneath the knee and the shin, walk the hands up onto the right knee or thigh. And then as much as you can, see if you can shift the shoulders back to stack over the hips, which actually brings you into quite a deep back bend here. Beautiful. Just take one more breath here in this supportive Anjaniyasana position, and then we're going to lower into a lizard. So both of the hands are going to come inside the right foot. You may find that you want to lower onto the forearms if that's kind of space that's available to you and really let the surface of that left thigh just kind of melt on top of your bolster and pillow as much as is available. Exactly. Wonderful. Like you're just draping that left leg over the bolster. We'll take one more full long breath here, not rushing the practice today. And then we'll start to guide our way back up onto our palms. We're going to step back to a plank position and just ignore that the bolster's there. We're going to take our vinyasa. We'll step back to a plank position. As you lower through chaturanga, you may find your body kind of skims the bolster. That's fine. As you push up to up dog, you might notice you get this added support through the pelvis and the upper legs. And then rolling over the feet to downward facing dog. Now, as we move to the second side, you might need to do some adjusting of the bolster as we step the left foot forward and the bolster is going to slide underneath the right knee and the right shin. Once you get that in place, walking the hands up onto the left thigh and then encouraging, so it might not make it, but encouraging the shoulders to slide back so that we're getting a little bit of a backbend action here. And instead of forcing the back bend, actually use the back muscles almost to move into a back bend. So it's active as you lean back. Yeah. And then we start to move into a lizard. Now we bring the hands down. All that activation in the back body gets to soften as we drop more into a supported flexibility shape. And just really letting that right thigh, the entire top of the right leg kind of melt over the bolster, feeling totally supported. We'll close out this sun salutation to come to the front of the mat. So hands come down onto the mat. And this will be a big step forward as the right toes tuck, the right knee lifts, and then you step over that bolster to find the front of your mat space, Uttanasana. Circle sweep they will, those arms rising all the way up to standing, and then hands come into heart center. Two more rounds of Surya Namaskaram. Inhale, lengthen the arms down towards the floor, take the breath in. Exhale, position one, palms come together and meet. Position two, reaching those arms forward, up, back, bend at the top. Position three, long spines folding over the legs. We'll step the right foot to the back of the mat. Hopefully the bolster is right there in place where we need it to be, lowering the right knee and the right thigh. Beautiful. We're going to wiggle that left foot over to the left side or that right side of the mat, pigeon pose, letting the right thigh and the right shin kind of melt over the bolster. Again, walk the fingertips back. Use the muscle of your, muscles of your spine to kind of take more of an active back bend here. One more inhale. Yes. 
and then go ahead and fold forward, pigeon pose for about four breaths. As we think about what it means to have a supportive, repetitive practice, maybe shapes that we've done for years, and yet doing them in a way that's really welcoming in a support system. Notice if you have any mental resistance to receiving that support fully. Start to walk up onto the palms. We're gonna do one more pose here. So we're gonna tuck the right toes. You're gonna try and lift the pelvis and step the left foot onto the mat. Lift the pelvis, straighten that left knee, finding a pyramid pose with railroad track feet. Now we're gonna make a variation here. So we're gonna deeply bend the right knee so it actually touches that pillow or bolster. It's gonna land on the pillow or bolster. And then I'm gonna rock onto my left heel and kind of lean back. So it's almost like I'm in a half split, but I'm a little bit more elevated, like I was in a pyramid. So it's slightly more active and really deep in this left hamstring. Take one more breath here. And then we're gonna shift it forward and step back downward facing dog. Let the body float forward, finding your plank position. Lower through chaturanga, the body might skim the bolster. Pressing up to upward facing dog, you might find you have a little island to land on. And then downward facing dog. Take a full breath here between sides. You might notice where your bolster is if you need to shimmy it over slightly to the left side of the mat. This is a good time to do so. And then we'll step the right foot forward and start to make our way into pigeon pose, right foot over to left side of mat. Finding that kaputasana with the bolster underneath the thigh, knee and shin. Pressing into the fingertips, activating a sense of back bend. And then folding forward for about four breaths. And whether it's off the mat in the version of a supportive friend or loved one, or it's on the mat in the form of a bolster or block or a strap. Support has a way of performing like a mirror for us where it allows us to see aspects of ourselves that might otherwise be hidden. I start to walk back up onto the palms we're coming into that pretty active pyramid. So as I tuck my left toes, I lift my pelvis, step my right foot to the middle of the mat. And then I, for a moment, I just straighten up into Parjvottanasana pyramid pose. And then I'm gonna soften my left knee just until it kind of lands on the surface of that bolster, rock back onto that right heel. I'm still really active in this left leg. So I'm not collapsing down here. I'm staying really active, almost like I'm in a um, hovering lunge and breathing into that right hamstring. One more breath here. I'm gonna come all the way to the front of the mat. So left foot makes a big step forward to meet the right. And then circle sweep rising all the way up. Hands to heart center. Last Surya Namaskaram, inhale, stand tall. Exhale, one. Two, forward, up, and back. Three, folding over the legs. Left foot to the back of the mat. Listening carefully, take your bolster, turn it horizontally, lower your left knee on the mat. So you've got a foot in front and a knee behind. We're going into supported Hanumanasana splits pose. Okay, so I would suggest having hands either on the bolster or in front. You start to lift the hips and walk the right foot forward as far as you can comfortably go. Comfortably go. The pelvis is gonna land right on your bolster. Now you could tuck the back toes, which is something I like to do because it encourages activity in that back leg. You could keep the front knee bent as I'm doing right now, or if your hamstring feels ready, you can fully straighten that right leg and flex that front foot.
okay? If you feel supported here, you could always circle sweep those arms, make a steeple mudra, lengthen those arms up, fingertips up towards the ceiling. If you need more support, hands on the floor or on blocks, leaning slightly forward. Two more breaths. One more inhale. And then wherever you are, the hands reach down and you use the hands to pick up the pelvis, drawing the feet towards each other. We're going to need to step that right foot back and around, finding our downward facing dog. Just keep the bolster as it is, shifting forward to plank pose. Pelvis will land on the bolster, chaturanga. Let yourself have that island of support in upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Beautiful. Second side. You're welcome to lower the knees to the mat first and then step that left foot over that little, it's like you're doing a yoga hurdle. <laughs> step the left foot forward and then you're going to start to lower pelvis down left foot comes forward now remember you can keep that front leg really deeply bent so the hamstrings not as much of an obstacle you can also lean forward so we're not as getting as much compression in the low back okay other options are to tuck those back toes straighten that left knee and you could always Release the hands and find a mudra. Two more breaths, a pose of devotion, appreciating the support of that bolster in your devotional practice. And then releasing those hands down, pushing the hands into the mat to lift the pelvis and then stepping right foot forward to meet the left folding in. Circle sweeping arms out and up. And hands into heart center. Beautiful. We're going to take one balancing pose before we come to the floor for a few yin shapes. You can move the bolster out of the way for this balancing pose. I'm going to do a very simple pose of Prapadasana. So we only have to do it once because it's already an even pose. So taking the feet about hip distance apart, lengthening the arms alongside you. Start to peel the heels up and away from the mat, rising up onto the balls of the feet, finding your tiptoe pose. If you feel stable in the ankles and the legs, you're welcome to add on the arms, sweeping them out and up towards the ceiling so that your entire body starts to resemble a sharpened pencil. We're not going to twist. We're not going to do anything funky here. Just three more breaths, breathing into the balls of our feet. Feeling supported by the breath itself. And then if the arms are up, start to release them first. And then lowering the heels, if you can, with as much control as you lifted them with. When you get there, feel free to kind of bend the knees, maybe shake it out. Sometimes there's a little burning in the back of the calves. Beautiful. And then we're going to come down to the mat, find your bolster once more, place it at the back of your mat space. I'm going to turn so I can see my clock for time reasons, but block, um, bolster at the back of your mat space. It's going to run the length of the spine. So we're going to come into either supported saddle pose or Supta Baddha Konasana reclined butterfly pose. So if you're doing saddle pose, knees are together, feet separate, and the pelvis comes in between. And then you can think of the bolster as the saddle on the back of the horse that you drape yourself over. Arms could either be alongside you or overhead, gently holding opposite wrist. If this is not a safe or smart place for your knees or ankles, by all means, bring the soles of the feet together knees wide, and then again, draping the spine over the bolster. And 
And you can rest in knowing that I am carefully minding the clock and we will be in this pose for three more minutes. And just noticing as this is our first yin pose, if the mind has any resistance to slowing down or if it feels really ready for this phase of practice. And just know that if the mind is putting up a little bit of a fight or being resistant in any way, that that's completely normal and to be expected. And you can also take comfort in knowing that the mind will naturally settle with time so you don't have to force it. In fact, if you just stay here and you just stay committed to being still and to breathing intentionally, then the mind will calm down in its own time. times that my mind feels particularly restless, I sometimes just say to myself, I'm learning to slow down. I'm just learning to slow down. And learning takes time. supported and learning takes time yourself one to two more breaths exactly as you are in this pose and then as you're ready start to bring the arms alongside you so that you can use the arms as a support to begin to lift the torso and then once you feel ready there's there's no rush to this you're gonna come forward onto all fours and we just take a brief pause to maybe extend one leg and lean back into a heel. And then swapping out, particularly if you were in saddle pose, sometimes there's a little bit of circulation constriction, which can be really good, but the, it can feel a little funny in the joints. And then we're gonna set up for a pose that I call hug asana. It's, it's a, belly down twist so the bolster doesn't need to move your support system is going to stay as it is but we're going to take the left hip and place it about two inches away from the back of the bolster so there's just a little smidge of space my knees are pointing to the long edge of the mat so it's almost like a Bharat Vajasana position with the legs and then turn the torso so that you have one hand on either side of the bolster and start to lay the belly down on your support system here. And then it's up to you. Some people find it more comfortable to have the head facing the same direction as the knees. Other people find that they have a lot of mobility that they really want to explore and turn the head the opposite direction. So I'm going to keep my torso somewhat upright so that you can hear me clearly. Maybe just noticing the interaction between 
your support system, your prop, and the abdomen and the breath. And you're just kind of watching the relationship, the interaction between the belly, the breath, and the bolster. Noticing how there's this give and take. There's a sense of pushing in and also a sense of softening that happens. Much the same way that in any relationship, there's give and take, push and pull. resistance and softening. Eventually bending the elbows to bring the palms underneath you and anchoring down into the palms to lift the torso. You've been in this twist for several minutes, so take your time coming out. And then you'll extend the legs straight to the back of your mat, or the front in this case. And the bolster is just right behind you. We're not gonna use it for a moment. We're just gonna take about 90 seconds to fold forward. This is not gonna be the deepest bend of your life, okay? So move any extra flesh out of the way. So we have this sense of the pelvis starting to roll forward. This is just creating a little counter movement in the spine. You can start to slide the hands forward. Let the spine round like a caterpillar. So we're not trying to get anywhere. We're just trying to get a nice counter sensation in the spine of folding forward. And then maybe reminding your body that we are indeed in a yin portion of the practice. So that means the soles of your feet can relax. And if your legs are asking to kind of roll out to either side, you can also let that happen without resisting it or fighting it. Just kind of reminding your body of the context of the practice right now so that we're not worried about alignment. We're not worried about being active with the muscles. We are allowing ourselves to be passively supported here. Just about three more breaths in this shorter caterpillar pose. And then in your own kind of leisurely way, start to elevate the torso once more. We'll take the belly down twist on the second side. So this time the knees need to point the other direction and the right hip will be about two inches away from the back of the bolster. 
As you bring one hand on either side, you start to rotate the navel towards your bolster, the heart, the head, and drop yourself down. that your spine might be more enthusiastic about twisting in one direction than the other. And you can just receive that as information. It's nothing you need to do anything with. It's just good information to acknowledge about where your body is right now and how it needs to be respected. Recognizing that spinal twists is an element of our hatha yoga practice that we do every time we come on the mat in some way, shape, or form. And yet reflecting on how it feels in this moment to be in this deep spinal twist intentional support system underneath you. Knowing that this is a pose that you could do on your own. You don't have to have the support. And yet maybe just recognizing what it's giving you right now. Maybe just appreciating the value of this added support. subsequent and final pose of the practice will be Shavasana. So just know that you can really move at your own speed to make your way to the shape of Shavasana that feels most supportive to you today. And you have your bolster friend that can come in in any way that feels best. doing a full five minute Shavasana in today's practice. So I'm just seeing if you can commit to putting the body into a position that will not require movement, that will allow you to be physically still. So that the mind has the opportunity slow down. In these first couple of minutes of Shavasana, I'll be giving you some very light guidance with a few phrases. And then I will give you the last half of your Shavasana, about two and a half minutes in silence.
Breathing in, I am aware of the earth beneath me. Breathing out, I allow myself to be supported by the earth. Breathing in, earth beneath me. Breathing out, allowing the support of the earth. Earth, support. in my life that love me. Breathing out, I am aware of the support of those that love me. Breathing in, aware of my loved ones. Breathing out, aware of their support. loved ones, support. Breathing out, I allow myself to be my own support system. Breathing in, aware of self-love. Breathing out, aware I can support myself. self-love, support. As the breath deepens, begin to welcome in subtle movement through the fingers and toes, wrists and ankles, including any movement that feels supportive, until eventually, in your own way and in your own time, you guide yourself back up to a comfortable seat. we prepare to seal our practice, you might bring the hands onto the body as a gesture of gratitude, or if you prefer a soft prayer position with the hands, dropping the chin slightly as a, a gesture of humility. May the entire universe be filled with peace and joy, love and light. 
which sounds like these four words in Sanskrit. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu. Victory upon all of our practices.